Hello, and uh, thanks for joining me again today. It's been a sad week for our state. The tragedy like the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore is pretty heart-wrenching, and its impacts can be felt for a long time. Our thoughts with those people who are impacted by this horrific situation, the support and resources in Montgomery County were immediately offered and remain available to the state, Baltimore City, and Baltimore County to assist with this. Just hours into the response, we heard from President Joe Biden, who understands how important the port is to our nation, and he pledged financial support to rebuild the bridge quickly. It is the largest shipping hub in the U.S. for automobiles and the 11th largest overall. I'm glad we've seen strong levels of leadership at both the federal and state level to deal with this emergency. I was in Taiwan last week and was joined by County Council Vice President Kate Stewart and our Director of Department of Environmental Protection, John Monger, along with Judy Costello, who's our Special Project Manager for Business Innovation and Economic Development. This is the second year that I was invited to speak at the Smart City Summit and Expo about the county's climate action initiative. And we again used the trip to focus on economic development opportunities with meetings with companies and academic institutions interested in expanding into the U.S. market and in coming to Montgomery County in specific. The companies we met with were particularly interested in our soft landing programs for companies expanding in our county. And the biotech companies and the universities were very interested in our new University of Maryland Institute for Health Computing in North Bethesda. While visiting with government leaders, including the mayors of Taipei and New Taipei City, I was able to learn how communications technology is being used to improve the lives of the residents there. It's very interesting to see level of sophistication they've developed. As happened last year, we met with a number of academic and government leaders who've lived in Montgomery County or studied in Maryland, and who personally felt very positively about how the Asian community here is treated and welcomed. Our highly educated and diverse workforce, plus our location near the nation's capital and many federal agencies, is valued by business leaders overseas. And I believe this latest trip will lead to the kind of economic opportunities that we saw develop after our last economic development missions last year to India, Taiwan, and Vietnam. I look forward to seeing those connections turn into new jobs and opportunities for people in Montgomery County. April is Earth Month, and governments and municipalities around the world are dealing with the same issues. How do we equitably and rapidly reduce carbon emissions, create more resilient communities, and move towards a zero waste future? Last week at the Net Zero City Leaders Summit in Taiwan, I saw firsthand how they are managing materials and recycling at an impressive rate. Here in Montgomery County, we're doubling down on our own sustainability efforts. The county continues to expand waste reduction and recycling programs and to modernize our recycling facility at the Shady Grove Processing Facility and Transfer Station to ensure it is efficient and user-friendly as possible. Our goal is to monetize our waste stream. In other words, figure out how much money we can collect for parts of the waste stream that have value. And we're doing this by recovering as much of our waste stream and finding uses for it. Our efforts to make our buildings and transportation less of a burden on the environment are also paying off. And our Department of Environmental Protection has been gearing up for tracking of energy use and planning for energy improvements that will take place in over 1,900 buildings countywide. We're also transitioning our bus fleet from fossil fuel based to solar powered electric and green hydrogen. And the progress is encouraging, but does not make up for the fact that climate change is a real human-made and significant threat to the continuation of our species and our way of life. We remain in a climate crisis, and frankly, conditions continue to worsen beyond the early projections of what might happen. There was a time when people talked about inches of sea level rise. Now we're talking about yards of sea level rise. We are now forced to spend hundreds of millions of dollars yearly in response to the damage done by major fossil fuel companies who encouraged this unsustainable behavior for years. Our ability as a community to work together to fight climate change is imperative. All of you who've seen the increased flooding here in the county are experiencing the climate consequences firsthand, and our large investments in stormwater control will continue to grow as we have to expand the capacity of our sewer system to control stormwater. In short, 
We have to deal with climate change on two fronts. We have to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to lessen future impacts, and we have to invest in mitigating the impacts we're already experiencing. Had this country and other nations responded a decade or two ago to what they were told was going to happen, we might have avoided the need for mitigation at this point and averted some of the really bad future outcomes. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The really sad thing is that in our country, our county and across the world, is that the fossil fuel industry lied about what they knew about climate change. And I mean lied, going back almost 30 years. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars convincing people there was nothing to worry about, nothing was gonna go wrong, and you could continue to consume and use fossil fuel energy for everything, even though their own studies showed that there was a lot to worry about. Now they take no responsibility for the disaster they created and expect our residents to pick up the tab for the problems they created. Unless and until there's the political will to require these companies to bear the cost of our mitigation efforts, residents here and throughout the country are stuck with the cost of fixing things. It's not fair, but we're faced with no choice but to address the problems that these companies created with our own resources. In many respects, we're taking the lead in combating climate change. We have made monumental steps forward. There's still a very long way to go to reduce emissions 80% by 2027 and 100% by 2035. But we need more company, in other words, other places, to join us on this journey. Montgomery County alone will not roll back climate change. The needed strategies have to be implemented at the national level and efforts by state and federal government are a welcome step in the right direction. As they would have said in my logic class back in college, the steps are necessary, but not sufficient at this point. As we begin Earth Month on Monday, I encourage you to get involved and find out what you can do to be carbon neutral at home. I'm looking forward to GreenFest 2024 on Saturday, April 27th at the Black Rock Center for the Arts in Germantown. It is the largest annual environmental festival in the county. It brings together the public and nonprofit partners to celebrate, learn, and act to help us make this county a greener county. And this year's Energy Summit is being held on April 15th and 16th at Silver Spring. This is an excellent opportunity for business and community leaders to learn the latest about energy efficiency, renewable energy, and much more. Please visit mcenergysummit.org to sign up and plan for this year's conference. The county and our vibrant community businesses and organizations are also hosting many other engaging and inspiring Earth Month activities that you can join and enjoy. Finally, on the health front, COVID and the respiratory viruses are relatively stable. However, there has been a national rise in measles cases, particularly in young children. This is concerning because this disease was once virtually absent from our scene. Now it's back only because more people have stopped vaccinating their children. This is not good. For decades, getting a measles shot was a normal part of our lives, but the effort to discredit COVID vaccines unfortunately has led to consequences in some people's view of other vaccines. This is literally not a healthy development. That's a wrap for now. Hope you have a great week and I'll be back again next week.